while. It's been a week or two maybe. I've been busy. I've been uh, my first demonstration show of the summer underway. Just to extend the legs on this tripod here. I was in Bunratty yesterday or two days ago, which was Sunday. Uh, and for the first time ever, uh, I was making and selling uh, little pieces at the actual craft show. So uh, this show's piece of choice was these little beach spatulas. About four months ago, a big old beech tree came down in a storm. Um, so it's still very fresh timber. So I was splitting that up using the fro and a few axes. And then I was using the old um, shave horse behind me there to uh, slice them up into these spatulas. And then I was selling them for a tenner. It's great fun. Um, sold eight of them. So, you know, that covered petrol up and down to Clare and then some. So yeah, it really got me excited for, um, for the craft shows this summer. That'll be my third year doing them. Uh, the first year I had no idea what I was doing. I kind of brought every single tool I had in boxes and just kind of tried to do something, but I was, you know, I was never really set up to do what I was trying to do. I might try and make a Sugan chair, but I was kind of lost without my workshop environment. Um, so last, last year now, I kind of, I didn't bother trying to make or sell anything. I was really just kind of getting the hang of the shows. And this year now I really think I'll be ready for go. So if anyone, is organizing any craft fairs or vintage shows um, and they want to hire some entertainment uh, I'd be more than happy I'm booking out my calendar to travel the country this summer so we've all the big dates booked already Ballina, Tubber Curry, uh, Bell Mullet, Minalty uh, oh I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it this year um, just before the live stream I was organizing my adjustable wrenches or spanners or whatever you want to call them and I realized I have a I have a load of these from the same make. They're called Bacho. Bacho. Uh, they're a Swedish company. Uh, and I have ruined it with red paint. I was painting my door today. Um, but I have a 12 inch version, a 10 inch version, a 8 inch version, and a 4 inch version, but no 6 inch version. So if anyone out there has a 6 inch version of the Bacho, what's it called? B Steel. Adjustable range, let me know. My, I'll never be, never be truly satisfied until I have the, the full collection every two inches. Uh, you fixed up an old screwdriver from 1890 today. Wowee, how did you know it was from 1890? Of all the tools that are difficult to date, I'd imagine screwdrivers would be up there as one of the hardest. First time catching the live stream. Yeah, I see there we have 600 viewers, which is way more than I've ever had. Must be a quiet day for the general media. Uh, do I have a receded hairline? I have something worse than a receded hairline. I have something called a receding hairline, which is, you know, kind of kind of bad because every day you look in the mirror and there's less of it. I was offered a free hair transplant uh, on account of having uh, a social media presence and I um I did bother going for it but uh yeah I was wondering how did they how did they know I guess they just went through a list of every single influencer they could find that wears a hat and was like yeah yeah we'll ask him uh, hey well if it isn't Glenn I'm driving me buddy so can't stay long well I hope you're not driving while you're watching the stream or I suppose you can once you have it tucked to the side and you're not looking at it Glenn uh, well, safe travels. Good to see you're back on the road after that little break. Oh, cool. Can people like your donation? I just saw that there now. Got six thumbs up. Can we get way more thumbs up for uh, Glenn's uh, super chat, everybody? Is it late in Ireland? It's about ten past ten, so I suppose it is. I'll be looking forward to my trip to Duvet Street now in an hour or so. Carl Brad, you got a beautiful standing number seven from America last week, Wee Beauty. I'll show you my Wee Beauty. This is my, um, my 1910 standing number seven, which I got and I should probably have done this to it before I put it away. The only reason it's covered in sawdust is because it gets a bit of use, you know. 
No room for passengers in this workshop. I mean, I say that, but I have loads of passengers. I can't say no to uh, most of the hand planes I see for sale. Why do, you, do I use old tools? They're cheap, satisfying, accessible. Um, you know, you, you don't need all these fancy modern machines to build. You can build almost anything with about 50 odd hand tools. It's a great book called The Anarchist Tool Chest, where they detail all the tools. I think Chris For Schwartz is the name of the author. And he, he has a big list of all the tools that you need to build almost anything from, from little boxes to full-on timber frame houses uh, and everything in between with just like 50 odd hand tools. We had a super chat in there from Thomas McGlynn. Thank you very much. Hey, we got 74 thumbs up on Glenn's. I don't know if you're still here, Glenn, but appreciate it. Am I selling a spoke shave by any chance? Spoke shaves are one of the few tools these days where you can still buy a decent one from Stanley. The Stanley 151, I think it's about 20 to 30 quid, depending on where you're from. You can buy it and it's just as good as the ones from 50 years ago, which is very unusual for hand tools. I remember over summer, uh, there was a, uh, I was at one of the shows and uh, a young lad and his father came up to me and uh, the young fella had just bought a wooden spoke shave off somewhere. He had seen it for sale around the fair and he brought it up to me and was like, oh, and will you sharpen this for me? And I was like, of course. So I took the, the, the wooden spoke shave off him and in order to sharpen it, you actually have to remove the iron, the blade. So I was like, oh, geez, that's, that's a stubborn old iron. And I was putting a bit more force on it. And just like that, I cracked it in two right in front of this poor little lad. And I was like, oh, Jesus. Um, so I asked him how much he paid for it, and he was like, oh, five euro. Uh, and I was going to pay it. But um, I remember then uh, I had a spare one lying around somewhere. So luckily I had it in one of the boxes that was with me that day. And I sharpened it up, and he sent, sent him on his way. But that was my last wooden spoke shave I, in theory, had for sale. They're worth a bit more than five quid, so he did well to get it at that price. Of course, you know, he didn't have it for long before I got my hands on it. Well, thank you, Rambo. I appreciate it. Didn't I? Yeah, I, I, there was a time where I was doing lives once every week. It was brilliant. Um, twice a week for a stage, but then I kind of, I suppose I fell off the horse a bit. Um, Do I ever chill? Like, watch TV? Mm -hmm. Ah, the odd time, yeah. Um, I kind of... I... I, don't, I prefer to just kind of be in the workshop most of the time. I really, really like it here. It doesn't really feel like a job. So, I suppose I... I, I have a fine balance between working hard and chilling when I'm in here. Uh, things take a lot longer, but I don't want to rush them either because that takes the fun out of them. Do I watch the rugby? I don't. Um, if we get close to the final, I'll probably go to the matches or watch them in the pub because there's good atmosphere around the place. But for now, not really a big sportsman, no. Sports, sports fan. One look at me and you'll know I'm not a big sportsman. Buy American, not Russian. Buy nothing. Reject consumerism. Embrace restoration and refurbishment. What's my favourite film? Um, uh, on my feed a lot lately, there's been edits of uh, The Banshees of Inisherin, which is, what, one or two years old at this stage? It's a great film. Um, yeah. I, I've seen a lot of films lately. There was, what, that one, uh, Poor Things. There's the one, All of Us Strangers. There's a lot of good films in at the moment. Are there still pencils in the sofa? There are. I, I went to put out the sofa bed there a while back, um, because I thought I was going to sleep down here for a night. Um, but uh, no, they're, they're still there anyway, safe and sound. The fridge pencil is still there, but we still got, let me show you. I, saw, I thought they might last till Christmas. We still got loads of them in here. There you go. I love when moisture, it's been raining all day, so all them like joints, like the wooden drawers have all 
swollen and everything is a tight fit at the minute. Have I seen a steam engine being fired lately? I don't have a steam engine, not yet. Um, but no, I haven't seen one being fired either. We'll have to wait for the Inishannon steam rally now in June, June, the June bank holiday until we get to see some more steam engines chugging about. How's Lucy? Um, she's, she's terrified of me these days. She does not like these, for some reason, the wooden clogs. I got out of my car when I came home earlier and uh, I went to, she comes, she usually runs up to the door, you know, so you open the car door, she sticks her head in, she sniffs about and it's great. Um, so I was rubbing her then. And then when I stepped out of the car, I went to rub her again and she kind of backed away from me. And then when I went to walk back around the house, she didn't follow me. I was like, why is that? But my mother reckons it's because I'm wearing the, the clogs. If I could only keep one tool out of all my tools, what would it be? I actually had a thought on the way down that if such a scenario was to occur, it would be the Shinto rasp. Let me see if I can find him. Usually he's within an arm's reach of me. Oh, I see him. I see him. Yep. I'm going to be making a, uh, an axe handle Tomorrow if the glue dries, but probably two days time, and I'm going to see if I can do the whole thing with just Mr. Shinto here. I'm really looking forward to it. I have, I'll show it to you actually. Oh God, it's a bit of weight on him now. Um, so this is a bit of ash that I cut last year, but glued to him here is a bit of bog oak. So that's some oak that was a living tree 10,000 years ago fell into a bog, the wood was preserved, it was dug out up in County Clare and left out to rot. Then I went visiting some fellow and he was like, here, have this. And now it's gonna be forever married into an ash handle that is going to be attached to an ax head that I got off my grandfather. I'll show you it. I reckon this this is quite a special axe to me, only because it's been in the family. Uh, my grandfather, my grandmother's father would have had it, so my great grandfather had this axe and probably would have used it for some thing. And now I get to use it today. This was at the time I thought this was the best handle I'd ever made, um, but now I see what I could have done a bit better. We improve as time goes on, and I'm looking forward to putting a much better handle on it. The blackened handles, are, yeah, like people seem to like the charred handles, but the more I've gotten into making them, the more I prefer that leaving wood its natural colour and having the oil make the grain pop, do you know? But yeah, maybe we will go back to doing charred bits again down the line. Am I going to do anything for one million subscribers? Oh, what will I? I'll do a stream where, uh, I suppose we'll do another celebratory stream, kind of like how we did on Christmas Day. I'll buy a bottle of champagne and I'll drink it in front of camera in my workshop by myself. Mm. Champagne, yeah, I've actually haven't drank champagne in years. I just I just know it's something people drink when they celebrate. It'll be a cheap bottle of champagne because anything expensive will be wasted on me. Any opinions on whittling? I bought a whittling knife there, um, so we'll hopefully be doing that a bit more over summer. Drink beer. Not sure you just drink beer when you're just casually drinking. What do I think about the Veritas dovetail saw? Beautiful, and I'd buy it if I wasn't so stubborn to only use mostly traditional woodworking tools. What about some tequila? Not a big fan of tequila now. I had it once when I was in Portugal. Spirits in general. They, uh, no, they, they're only good for unpleasant mornings. Have I ever done anything out of hawthorn wood? I haven't. There's a load of hawthorn shrubs been planted all over farm next to the workshop so maybe when they mature we go 
But uh, yeah, I'd like to do a bit of a shillelagh making, stick making. But uh, to be honest, I wouldn't even know how to identify blackthorn or whitethorn. So if anyone knows any tips on spotting them in hedgerows, hear me out and uh, shoot, drop me a line and I'd love a bit of advice. But um, yeah, there's a lot of superstition in Ireland as well about cutting uh, cutting branches off little hawthorn shrubs and blackthorn and whitethorn shrubs just lying about in the middle of the field. People think that those shrubs kind of belong to the fairies and you should leave them alone. But that's only an old folk tale. But still, it's nice to keep the tradition. Is bog oak hard to work with? Incredibly. It's about as seasoned as oak can get. I mean, it's 10,000 years since it was a living piece of wood. Well, it's still living. Wood only dies when it rots. But it, yeah, it, it's a pretty tough timber to work with, all right. It stinks as well. I don't know if anyone's ever worked it here, but it smells very bad. John van der Schuett, thank you very much. Have I seen another steam engine or just the, the 1910 Marshall steam engine owned by the Tompkins? Um, in the steam rally that happened last year, I think there was about 50 steam engines there, all chugging along in a row, which is about one-fifth of all the steam engines that are supposed to be in the country at the moment. So it's quite a turn up. Uh, one Sunday I went to the, the local shop for lunch and uh, there was a load of steam engines parked up so that was a nice surprise. They were doing a steam run but uh, they only went about like seven kilometres all day long. They had a load of those miniature ones as well. I think they're cool but they're they're fair expensive. Um, they're about 50 grand for just like a small miniature replica steam engine. You know, you gotta have the real big deal, the real heartache. Have I ever considered narrating an audiobook? I haven't, but uh, I might be writing a book at the minute, but I'm not going to say anything in case it doesn't happen. John O'Callaghan says, Hello, Owen. Can you see my comment? I can, John. How are you? I, I, I see you, you've done a good job with your LinkedIn profile these days. It's nice to see you getting on and out there with your professional career. Good man. We're all very proud of you. Facebook fraud still going on. Apparently, we're we're near the finish line, but but uh, I'm, I'm waiting to sign a contract. Uh, supposedly, I might be getting a bit of a a payout from Facebook for all the stolen ad revenue, but I'm not holding my breath for that too much. Does your mom and dad tune into my vlogs? I'd say my father's kind of stopped doing it. He did it at the start. Noreen tunes in, my mother, uh, tunes in every um, every live stream for about five minutes. Every time I come home, then she'll have something to say. She'll be like, oh, you shouldn't have said that, or you should have mentioned that. So, you know, a bit of constructive criticism in the household. Hello Owen's mom if you're here. Hi mom, how are you? What's my favourite plane for hardwoods? It really depends. There's no one plane suited better for different wood. It's all about um, the task at hand, what you're trying to do. If you're trying to joint a long straight edge, you need a joint to plane. If you're trying to smooth on a board, you need a smoothing plane. If you're trying to hog off materials, maybe a scrub plane. It, it really varies what you're trying to do. There's no one plane suited towards different types of wood, really. Have you ever worked with purple heartwood? I think it's a bit overrated. I don't think it works. It looks very good. It's, it's just, it looks weird for timber to be purple. When you think of wood, you don't think, ah, yeah, purple. You think of like, you know, different shades of brown.
lot of messages being held for review here. Dubai is trying to get me to look out the window here at the minute. Apparently there's someone looking at me through the window. But I won't give him the satisfying of looking. I'd rather be stabbed in the back from not looking than give them the satisfaction of knowing I read their comments and acting upon it. Favourite... I'm, I'm a sucker for red. My hands are actually covered in red at the minute. And just dirt in general. I was uh, painting the, the half doors of the workshop today. Can't wait to see how they look tomorrow morning in the sunlight. Uh, painted them red, which I think is, is a very nice, iconic colour for traditional Irish half doors. How is the pudding? Um, Ash, I've decided to call her Ashley. Ash for short. Um, she's, she's hyper. You, you can't get two foot close to her without her jumping up on you. And she has, I don't know what they're called, but you know the way dogs have like another little claw like up here and then they've got their other just normal claws. Well, the normal claws run on the floor and they, you know, get trimmed by the friction or whatever. Um, but this one that's up here is razor sharp. And every time she jumps up, she like grabs her paws around you and she, she'd be pulling on your jumper and she just cuts into your hand. They're so sharp. And yeah, she's only a pup. I, I suppose I, she's not my pup, so I don't know, should I be training her? But I'd, I'd like to teach her how to stop. It's called a dew claw, there you go. How warm was the workshop? The workshop's grand at the minute, but we're expecting freezing temperatures, maybe even snow this weekend. So we'll be getting the gas heater back out. Do I have a cat? No, I think we should get a cat out here. I'd love to, because there's a bit of a, a mice problem at the minute. Owen is 22. Do I work for a company or is it a shop you own? Um, no, geez, we have over a thousand live viewers. How did that happen? Um, uh, the chat is getting out of hand here. Meow Meow has a super chat that says, I, I genuinely can't keep it, oh, it's just two eye emojis. Thanks, Meow Meow. Okay. Okay, we're back down to a more reasonable number of viewers now. 600. There's shorts live now. Oh, is that it? So am I coming up on people's shorts feed? Because I know that's a thing with TikTok, which I think is great. Am I going to make that axe handle website? Uh, I thought about it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to source enough ash to do it. So that's quite upsetting, but who knows? Right, we have a, a super chat in there from uh, John Vandershoot. I gotta go because I'm working with much love from Midwestern USA. Well, all the best. Thank you very much. Am I coming to New Zealand? Well, I suppose I'll pop by at some point to say hello. Um, I know, I don't think I'll ever leave Ireland for more than a few, two months maybe. I love this place. What does it mean when the distance saws are made in Canada instead of America? The Canadian ones aren't as good, I'm afraid. What you want is a nice, nice American distant. They're grand. I have a few Canadian distant. They're fine. Um, collectors and stuff hold the other ones at more value, but... You don't really need to get caught up in all this kind of collection business. Just find tools that work and tune them to work better. Till you find you can't work them any better, then upgrade the tool if you have to. But for most cases, any vintage tool is good enough, regardless of country of origin. Ever thought of coming to the US? Yeah, I'd love to, but uh, there just hasn't been an opportunity yet. Um, doing a bit of traveling to around Europe this um, this year now, going to mostly England to be fair. 
Um, we have a, a super chat in. Um, hello from Saudi Arabia. Thank you, bud. Do I use a chainsaw? No. See that saw behind me up there? That's my chainsaw. Nah, nah. My, if you check out my most recent video, you'll see me cheating and using a nice Husqvarna 445. Um, Sky Kibo says, let me know if you ever visit Kentucky. Yes, the chicken is good. You must know. We do have a few KFCs over here and there. Be a blaster. Uh, Dr. Jack Bright says, are the hills as green as they say? Sometimes in Ireland, if you have a nice sunny day and we get like just all of a sudden a nice burst of rain that lasts maybe like 10 minutes and then the sun comes back. The, if you are standing anywhere where you have a nice view of the countryside, the green is like nothing you'll ever see before. It's very rare. You might only see something like that happen twice a year, but I, I love nothing more than when it does happen. Yeah, I've heard the south is a good place to go for traditional tools and woodwork, so we'll see. Oh, I suppose I'd like to visit a few uh, woodworking YouTubers over there. Maybe Wood by Wright, Rex Kruger, who knows? Am I drunk? Stone cold sober, I'm afraid. <laughs> Say something political that is extremely controversial and di dividing. Good idea. You used to restore vintage Marish Oxfords. Full ash frame. Missed the work. Um, but not the boss. Well, interesting. Is that in Ireland you were doing that? That's fascinating work. I always liked those old Marish miners. I think you can still buy kits somewhere um, to do the the ash restoration work. We have a super chat in from Errol Gray that says, uh, how easy is it to find work in the artesian furniture? Um, thinking of getting the trade. To be honest, I wouldn't know. I don't think I am an artesian furniture maker. I have no qualifications of any sort. I just play around with old tools and now it's my job somehow. But um, I'd imagine it's like any artisanal craft. You'd have to go off and do your own thing for a while, maybe work for someone um and then eventually come up with your own style and craft and go with that and you know market yourself earn a earn a reputation build a brand and you know then you could probably be making all sorts of wonderful money doing what you love it'll surely beat a corporate job anyway right there i think there was a super chat got in there uh, uh hi from romania thank you Did I find out who steal my videos? I haven't, no, but when I do, God help them. Go in there now and put linseed oil in his cornflakes when he's not looking. That'll show him. Run out of pencils. I've literally, I keep two. I keep that thang on me, look at that. One for me and one for when someone goes, have you any pencil I could borrow? Thank you, Arrow, for the super chat. Thank you. There was another one there from... Ah. Foos, thank you, buddy. And another one from Baby Tip. 80. I genuinely can't keep up with these things. Baby, it's 97. Uh, heard political Michael Collins. Are you, I'm sorry, I couldn't get that. But thank you very much. Wonderfully hygienic bottle you had there. We were out we were out planting trees yesterday. A load of beeches and they got a bit mucky, but I'll show you the inside is squeaky clean. 
Yeah, we were out planting trees in the field and I had brought my car and trailer out onto the grass and um, we were working away anyway and about five o'clock when it was time to drive the car back home um, there had been like maybe 10 minutes of light drizzly rainfall and the car just would not move so we had to get the tractor out and everything and just my car just got destroyed and muck inside and out somehow. Right lads, I think I'm going to call it a night here. I'll answer two more questions and I'll call it a night. Um, do I have more than one hat? I have about six hats, uh, but this is the one that sees the most daylight. It's my personal favorite. What's my plan with the pitch pine? Uh, which pitch pine was that? Oh, I was looking for pitch pine, but it wasn't for me. It was for um, a traditional yacht that someone was restoring in Waterford. So I just said I'd use my platform to help him source it. Uh, Walter Mellon asks, I've been, uh, this is a super chat, so we'll, we'll answer him before we end it. I know I only said two, but we won't leave him hanging. Um, I've been wanting to get into woodworking uh, but all we have around here is birch. Have you any experience working with birch wood yourself? Um, no, actually, we have birch firewood. Um, and I've played around with bits of that making handles and stuff. Um, it's a decent enough, it's not the worst hardwood you could be working with. Um, but yeah, I would, uh, I would be shy to import hardwoods if birch is your only local thing. That's hard to believe. Where are you in the world that birch is the only thing you can get your hands on? There we go. Someone says birch makes beautiful cabinets. There you go now, Walter. Right, lads. I'm going to call it at that. Thanks for all of you who joined. Good night and good luck.